स्मारक निर्माण किया गया है लास्ट पार्ट वी सॉ भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी स्ट्राइव्स टू प्रिंट श्रीमद भागवतम एंड सेट्स सेल टू अमेरिका नाउ फर्दर receive his letter and he's already on his way. His ship docks in New York in a few days. What can I do? He's a 70-year-old saintly man who knows no one in America. So what are you planning to do? The least we can do is to send someone to meet him. And when he comes here? Well, we have a guest room. He's a 70-year-old total stranger. He's not even a relative. We don't know anything about him. And you want him to stay in our home? I was wondering about it too. Do you have any idea? Anyway, let me think about it. I'm sure I'll come up with something. Service 124 from New York has just arrived at gate 27. Greyhound Service 124 Greyhound from New York has just arrived at gate 27. Swamiji, this is my wife Sally, 
and our daughter Pamela. I'm very happy to meet you. Pleased to meet you too. Hello, Pamela. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> Did you get a good rest? Yes, I had a nice sleep. Thank you. I hope you're comfortable at the YMCA. Yes, quite comfortable. I'm sorry for causing you so much of inconvenience. Not at all, Swami. Hi, honey. What's the matter? Can't I even smoke in my own house? It's better if you don't smoke in front of him. Why not? I'm not in India. What's the big deal about smoking? Well, he's senior in age to us. And after all, he's a holy man. Can't you restrain yourself out of respect? Okay. I won't smoke in front of him. God is the supreme person. He is the greatest. No one is superior to him or equal to him. God is not a Hindu or a Christian or a Muslim. But all the religions speak of him. The goal of all religions is to approach him and to show how to love him. We are all his parts and parcels. Therefore, we are very close to him. He is waiting for us to turn to him. If we sincerely desire that, he will make all the arrangements for us to go back to him. Therefore, all we have to do is Sincerely pray to God, Krishna, to help us love him. Swami, I have a question for you. What do you think of Jesus Christ? Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came to remind us about our relationship with God. You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord? Oh, yes, certainly. Sir, I also have a question. Yes? You said all we have to do is sincerely pray to God? The best form of prayer is to glorify God. Can you please explain how we should do that? God is one, and therefore the way to approach God is also one. In essence, all religions show us the same way. That is very reassuring to hear. Yes, the Vedic scriptures explain that in this age we have to chant the names of God Simply by chanting the names of God, we can come close to Him and gradually become purified. Then we can go back to Him. You mean like the way the Catholics chant on the rosary? Yes, just like that. See, this is my rosary. You said one should chant the names of God. Could you tell us how to do that? Yes, God has many names. All those names indicate his qualities and pastimes. Krishna means the all-attractive. Rama means the supreme enjoyer. And Hare is his internal potency. Therefore, we pray to him, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sir, please, move to the side. That's perfect. Please hold it now. That's it. We're going, Mom. Don't forget the strawberries on your way home. Okay. See you later, Mom. Come straight home after school. More coffee? Mm-hmm. Who's that? Hmm? In the picture. Oh, him. He's an Indian Swami living in Butler. An Indian Swami in Butler? Yes, Butler is blessed. I bet my students would love to hear him. Does he speak English? The article says he's fluent. Hello? Hello there. Uh, may I speak to A.C. 
Bhaktivi Swami, please. He's not here at the moment. Actually, he doesn't live here. He's staying at the YMCA. This is Professor Alan Larson. Yes, I'll ask him to call you when he comes. He shouldn't be long. Why don't you give me your name and number and I'll have him call you when he gets in. Okay. Professor Larson, Slippery Rock State College. Lecture to the students. Okay, I think he'll like that. 257-3156. Yes, I'll tell him. Thank you. Bye. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. I told you, honey, Hare don't Rama, stare. Rama, Come on. Rama, Hare, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Swami? Professor Larson? Yes. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. I'm pleased to meet you, too. Well, shall we go? It's very nice of you to uh, agree to lecture on such short notice. Not at all. It is my pleasure. I jumped at the chance when I saw the newspaper article. You have done me a great favor. Thank you very much. I wanted all of my students to have the opportunity to hear you speak, so I arranged for two lecture sessions. Will that be all right with you? Yes, that will be fine. It's quite challenging, you know. You see, I like it when I am challenged. When I introduce you to my students, I want to pronounce your name correctly. Can you help me get it right? Bhakti Vedanta. Bhakti, Bhakti Vedanta. That's correct. Can you explain what that means? Bhakti means devotion to the Lord. Vedanta means the ultimate conclusion of spiritual knowledge. So Bhakti Vedanta means the ultimate conclusion of spiritual wisdom is the love of God. That's the Christian explanation also. Yes. There is no difference in the teachings of Jesus Christ and those of the Vedas. God is one. The God that Jesus spoke of and Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are one and the same. Hmm. The Sanskrit word for God is Bhagwan, which means one who possesses all opulences. He is all-powerful. He knows everything. He is the source of all beauty. He possesses all the wealth. Even though he owns everything, he is completely renounced. Because of these qualities, he is most attractive. He is the supreme creator. He is maintaining everything. He cares for us so much that he always resides in our hearts. It is due to our forgetfulness of him that we have fallen into this material nature. Here, we are reincarnating from one body to another in different species of life. But when we get this human form, we are endowed with a developed consciousness and the ability to utilize it to perceive the Lord. Therefore, this human form of life should be utilized for reviving our spiritual consciousness and for developing our loving relationship with Him. Does anybody have any question? You said that God created this world. Can you please explain how? When God creates, it is not the same as the way a man creates. Simply by the glance of the Lord, the living entities are placed into this material nature, and due to their presence, the inert matter becomes active, and the material nature becomes manifest. How long are you planning on staying in America, Swami? I really do not know. 
Much depends on how things develop here. You mean how people respond to your teachings? Yes. Mm. What kind of trees are these? Oak trees. Oh, America is a beautiful country. Lots of trees everywhere. Nature certainly has bestowed her beauty here. <laughs> Do you think so? Yes. Hmm. You know, growing up in America, one often fails to appreciate that. Hmm. Well, it's almost time for the next lecture. We should go. All right. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, that is a very good boy. Come on, come on. In our Vedic culture, a mother's role in bringing up her children is considered very important. She has a great responsibility for educating them in their early years. How do you mean? In the beginning of the lives of the children, she has to teach so many things, and so she's like a guru. Guru? <laughs> yes. She teaches so many things, so she is like a guru. She has the responsibility to see that they become God conscious and so many other things. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, come on. Very good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Hey, this looks like a celebration. Fritch just stood on his own for the very first time today. Swamiji <laughs> was helping him all afternoon, and he's just now took his first step. <laughs> hey, you walk all by yourself? Oh. <laughs> Swamiji, we knew you wouldn't use utensils that have been used for non-vegetarian cooking. So we bought you new ones. That is very nice of you. This is a beautiful kitchen. Oh, thank you. We got some vegetables for you. I hope you like them. These are very nice. Mamiji, well, I want to show you the spices I got. <laughs> Never bought Indian spices before. I hope they're all right. This is very good quality cumin. Is this a gas stove? Yes. In India, people generally cook on a wood or coal fire. The kitchens look quite different. Before I came here, I used to live in Vrindavan. And there I used to cook on cow dung fire. Yes, I remember as a child. My mother also used to cook on cow dung fire. Yes. That gives a very special taste to the food. Do you like to cook, Sally? I love to cook. I will teach you how to cook Indian food today. That sounds like fun. See, when I finish cooking, I offer everything to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. As a matter of fact, we have to do everything for the pleasure of the Lord. Then only our activities get purified. Therefore, we have to offer everything to Lord Krishna. And I can show you how to do that. I'd like that, please. Can I help by cutting the vegetables? Why not? While you cut vegetables, Sally and I will cook rice and dal. Come inside. Okay. Why don't we sit here? It's nice out in the open. Sure, that'd be nice. Let's go sit over there. Why don't I go get you a cup of coffee? Swamiji isn't only a vegetarian. He doesn't drink tea or coffee either. Yeah. Oh, I see. I'll just go get him some orange juice then. Would that be okay, Swamiji? Yes, that would be all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, there are so many people here, just like Mrs. Cohen. They're so nice in Butler. Yes. We lucked out so much when we lived here. It's like a large family. And Pamela has made so many friends at school. Swamiji. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Here you go. Here you are. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Swamiji, why don't you take tea or coffee, if you don't mind me asking? If one wants to become a follower of God, he should not take any kind of intoxication, including tea and coffee. Oh, that seems like a very strict standard. Yes. When one takes to spiritual life, one should have to maintain a strict standard and discipline. Anything that degrades mm. our consciousness should be rejected. Therefore, one should not take any kind of intoxication. One should not eat meat, abstain from illicit sex, and should not gamble. Then only he will be able to become pure and focus his mind on God. Hey, Swami Jesus. What did you say? Swami Jesus. <laughs> she said Swami Jesus. And a little child shall lead them. This is Benjamin Franklin, the founder of our university. He's a very wise inventor, writer, and ambassador. So, you know about Benjamin Franklin? He is very famous all over the world. Instead of using the word God, I prefer to use the expression the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This indicates that He is the greatest. He is one without a second. No one is superior to Him or equal to Him. He is the creator and maintainer of this universe. And he is taking care of us in all respects, like a loving father. Therefore, we have a relationship with him. We will experience real happiness when we turn towards him, depend upon him, and try to love him with all our hearts. Hey, what are you looking at? You see that man? There's such a brilliant light around him. Oh, you mean that monk? Yeah. That's not a brilliant light. You must be seeing things. No, it's him. He's glowing. Have you been taking that LSD stuff? No, I'm not hallucinating. It's real. He's glowing. to you today? Nothing. Then why are you so unusually thoughtful? You won't believe what I saw today. It was the most amazing thing. What happened? Well, I was walking with Dave, and all of a sudden I saw this glowing Indian monk walking through the campus. He was so clean, like it was the kind of clean that comes from inside. What was he doing there? I don't know. All I know is I want to be clean like him. I felt like he was from another planet. I wonder who he is. He stayed with us for about a month and became so close to us. He became a part of our family. Actually, he became a part of the whole Butler community. I felt protective of him in a way. One day, he decided to go to Philadelphia because he got an invitation to give a lecture at the University of Pennsylvania. I thought he would just go for a day and come back, 
but then he told us that he wouldn't be coming back. From Philadelphia, he would go to New York. He knew no one in New York. My heart aches at the thought that he is all alone in that vast and cruel city. Welcome to New York, Swamiji. Thank you, Dr. Vishra. You have been very kind to me. Excuse me. I have a special guest to be introduced today. This is Swami Bhaktivedanta from Kolkata. He just arrived in America. I was suffering from gastroenteritis for a long time, but by eating food cooked by you, I got cured. That's because what you ate was not ordinary food, but Krishna Prasad. Prasade Sarva Dukhanam, Hani Rasyo Pajayade. Krishna Prasad delivers you from all the miseries. That's lovely, Swamiji. Your faith in Krishna is so infectious. At times it seems, due to your contact, even I will be becoming a devotee of Krishna. <laughs> Dr. Mishra, if I can make you a devotee, then I will consider it the greatest achievement of my preaching career. Well, well, Swamiji, I am not an atheist. I too follow the tenets of the Vedas. Oh, what is your conclusion? The conclusion of Vedanta is that the absolute truth, the ultimate source of everything, has got no form, no quality and no potency. Therefore, it is impersonal. No, it is a misconception of the Vedanta philosophy. But doesn't Vedanta say ultimately everything nirakar, nirvishesh? Yes, that is just to indicate that his form, his qualities and his potency are not material. But logically, all forms have limitations. Does it sound logical that the one who created this universe does not have potency? Well, that's the doctrine of Shankaracharya. But one should know why Shankaracharya came. In Padma Purana, it is clearly mentioned, Maya Vadam Asha Chastram 
प्रछन्न बौद्धम उच्चते मायावाद इज अ डिस्टोर्शन ऑफ द वेदिक स्क्रिप्चर एंड इट इज अ कवर्ड बुद्धिज्म You mean to say that Shankaracharya was wrong? No, he wasn't wrong, but he distorted the meaning of Vedas to bewilder the demons. That's your conclusion. No, the Vedas have always one conclusion, but the misconceptions can be many. But then, how does one decide what is the right conclusion? You have to find that out from the teachings of the great saintly persons. No 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 stop i will serve you just one minute